Uh, and today we're going to welcome uh, Akhil Matthew from the University of Chicago. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's great to have him here, uh, even if it's only virtual. But ideally, he's going to be visiting Stanford for a chunk of time this year, but we'll go with the virtual version of it uh, instead. And he's going to tell us about the K theory and we'll pivot cohomology. Okay, yeah. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, yeah, so, um, right, so I, I would like to uh, talk about some work and I guess work in progress with uh, Borgov Dodd and, uh, and Dustin Clausen. Um, right, so, so maybe I should start by, um, by talking a little bit about algebraic K theory to begin with. Um, so, right, so, so, so algebraic K theory is, well, it, let me, maybe I'll first say something about K0. So, so given a scheme X, so algebraic K theory is something that's going to take as input a scheme, which I'm always going to assume to be QCQS, um, then the algebraic K theory of X uh, is an invariant uh, which uh, is extracted uh, from, uh, from perf of X, which is, uh, which is a category of, of perfect complexes on X. So, right, so let me start by defining K0 and, and saying something about that. So, so first of all, so this, this category perf of X uh, is going to be, can be defined as a collection of, well, there are sort of two ways you can define it. So this is gonna be, um, it's, a, it's gonna be a subcategory, sorry. Uh, it's going to be a subcategory of the, the derived category of, of quasi-coherent sheaves on X. Um, and it's going to be the subcategory uh, consisting of those objects um, well, of those objects, well, you can describe them as the, as the compact objects. So it's a subcategory consisting of the compact objects. So in other words, those objects A in D of X, such that when I take Hans in D of X out of A, this commutes with direct sums. Uh, so, so this is the notion of a compact object in the derived category of quasi-coherent sheaves on X. Um, and this picks out a subcategory, which is called a category of perfect complexes. Uh, but maybe, maybe more concretely, it's, it's an object of the derived category, which locally on X, you can, you can, you can express it as a bounded complex of vector bundles. So an object A in D of X is, sorry, D of X, it's derived category. Uh, is perfect if uh, so if locally on X uh, a can be represented uh, as a bounded complex of, of vector bundles. So in particular vector bundles are uh, perfect. Okay, so uh, right, so we can think of perfect complexes on X. It's sorry, this is a so the derived category of X is a is a triangulated category, um, has a notion of the exact triangle, and and perf of X is a is a triangulated subcategory, uh, and from there you can define K zero of X. So so K zero of X in uh, in its generality. Um, sorry, is... can I sorry can I have a brief question, please? Mm -hmm. uh, your derived category is uh, category is. Uh... Uh, consist of uh, OX modules with quasi coherent uh, cohomology. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, I guess, it's also going to be the derived category of the abelian category of quasi coherent sheaves. Uh, in setting. Uh, of quasi coherent sheaves for, for this, you need uh, uh, to assume that X is uh, semi. Uh, not quasi compact, quasi separable, but uh, si I don't remember semi separable, something like that. I don't remember exactly. So, uh, in this generality, I don't think it is a direct category of quasi coherent shapes. Uh, I think it is, but uh, well, maybe, okay, but uh, never mind. At, le at least for reasonable if schemes, I'm, yeah. If I'm wrong, uh, well, maybe I can double check that. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Uh, um, 
Okay, so um, all right, so so k zero of x is uh, is going to be the following abelian group. Um, so k zero of x is the abelian group with the generators given by. So it's it's a, it's a abelian group defined by generators and relations, and if you get a generator for uh, for each object of, of perfect x, so 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 we're going to get a generator brackets a for each a and perfect x, and the relations are going to come from exact triangles. So uh, right. So and if there's an exact triangle a prime to a to a double prime, so it's an exact in perp of x, uh, right? So that then then I need to require that the class of a is a sum of the class of a prime plus the the class of a double prime. So so this defines a uh, a group by an abelian group by by generators and relations. Uh, in fact, it's a it's a commutative ring because you can also take the tensor product of of perfect complexes. Um, right. So maybe let me just make a remark. Sorry. So, 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 so it goes back to the, the question. Um, so right. So so maybe in in a lot of cases this is this is a uh, this is sort of overkill. Uh, you don't you don't need to say anything about perfect complexes. And uh, so if 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 x is say quasi projective, uh, then it's enough to just work with vector bundles everywhere. So then can define k zero using vector bundles. Uh, and instead of talking about exact triangles, then you would, you would talk about exact sequences. Uh, but I, yeah, so I wanted to sort of state it in this generality because because uh, um, because if you want to do things from for for a general quasi compact quasi separated scheme, somehow working with perfect complexes gives you a good theory. Um, I mean, maybe a more serious reason is that uh, it's actually even even if you are only interested in quasi uh, quasi projective schemes, then there's, there's actually sort of more things that you can do with perfect complexes that you can't do quite as easily with vector bundles, such as pushing them forward. So it's somehow useful to, to work this way. Um, okay, so this is uh, it's the definition of K0. Um, right, and so maybe I should, should give an example. Um, okay, so, so now actually, yeah, let me assume that uh, X is a smooth and quasi projective variety uh, over a field. Um, right. So, so, so then you then there's always a, a nice description of the rationalization of, of k zero of x. So, so k zero of x. Uh, so there was a nice morphism. Uh, that if you rationalize k zero of x, uh, it's isomorphic to the the direct. It's it's isomorphic to the to the rationalized chowering of x. So. Uh, isomorphic to the direct sum of the, the rationalized Chow groups of X. And this is a ring isomorphism using the, the multiplication on the Chow ring. Um, and so, so this isomorphism comes from the churn character. So if you have a vector bundle or more generally a perfect complex, you can um, you can define its its churn character in the Chow ring and that, that gives you a map. Um, well, you check that that gives you a map on K0 and it, in fact, it gives you an isomorphism. Um, right. So, so, so in this case, you you recover the Chow ring, um, and right. So I think it's it's sort of a, an idea which which maybe goes back to Grundig, that that one reason sort of one motivation to um, to be interested in K zero is that uh, somehow the definition of the Chow ring. I mean, it takes some work to define the Chow ring. Uh, so in this context of let's say smooth quasi projective varieties over a field, and let's say maybe one has to prove something like a moving lemma. Um, if you you know if you if you're multiplying cycles and maybe you want to sort of uh, move them into general position so you can uh, take the, their intersection. Um, well, in any case, it takes it takes some work to define the, the Chow ring. Um, moreover, the Chow ring is not necessarily going to be defined if you're in some more general setting than a, a smooth variety over um, over a field. Um, so if you have a singular variety, for example, well then you have Chow groups, but they're not necessarily well they're not going to form a ring, for example, and in fact they're not going to be the Structure that's um, relevant here. So I think the the idea is that well, at least if you look at this, then uh, 
you can think of K0 as a, as a way of doing intersection theory, uh, or doing schematic intersection theory, uh, when you when you leave this world of smooth smooth quasi projective varieties. Um, so, so because so the definition I, of K0. So yeah. question, I, I, so I thought, so your K0, I realized like maybe this was a, earlier in the slides, but you, you had yet, you were not talking about any multiplicative structure yet. It hadn't oh, arrived. sorry. So I think I, maybe I said that, said that briefly, but I should, uh, Sorry, I'll also write it. So, 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 right. So, k zero of x is a ring uh, under the tensor product. Right. Thanks. That's the multiplication. That's the issue in that example. In the quad, that's why you in the smooth quads you project it. Otherwise, yes, this would be true just for the additive. Ah, uh, right. But sorry, but if if, if I if I drop, it's, it, yeah, it wouldn't be true. It wouldn't be true for k zero. It'd be true for uh, for the variant of k zero called. Uh, I get all the called G, G theory, G zero, K theory of coherent sheets instead of perfect complexes, right? Um, okay, yeah. So, so for example, you don't uh, a priori one doesn't. Um, so, I, I think already if you're if you have uh, e even if you have something which is smooth, but over uh, say over a Dedekind domain instead of over a field for the integers, it's not so clear how to define uh, define the Chow ring. But but you have you have a K zero somehow completely generally uh, because you be, you need to be able to talk. To define K zero, essentially, you need to be able to talk about perfect complexes, and you can talk about a perfect complex essentially with no sort of finiteness assumptions, but maybe just CCQS QS assumption. Um, but so somehow K zero is something that you you get for free. Uh, you don't have to do any work to define it. Well, you know, in, in practice, people have used this to prove things about sort of actual intersections and um, the challenge. But okay, so 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 right. So maybe let me write that. So K zero gives a way of Defining um, a version of the Chow ring very generally. Uh, so, if if you rationalize. Um, okay. Yeah. And so maybe let me also just let me I'll just say this in words. But there's uh, there's an analog of this in algebraic topology, which is that uh, if you have a finite CW complex, you can look at the the Grotendieck uh, ring of what they find in a similar way of, of topological vector bundles on it. Um, and then it's sort of a basic fact that when you rationalize this ring, it's the same as the even cohomology of, of, of your space. Um, and this is, well, uh, this is sort of the analog in, um, the analog for an algebraic variety for algebraic K theory. Okay, so, so this is something about K0. Um, and so now I wanna say, maybe say something about, about higher K theory. Um, so there's a there's a construction, which I guess originally uh, goes back to Quillen. Actually, uh, maybe a question first, which is why would you why would you rationalize? Like, why not just stay integral? The only reason rationalizing is that you want to connect it to Chow, which you don't right. have now anyway. So why not just stay integral? Um, yes. Yeah, so in fact, I guess what I'm gonna essentially all all of what I'm gonna gonna talk about is gonna be after piatic completion. Good. Um, okay. Yeah. So so well, actually, many of the I guess the sort of really deep mysteries in K theory are about the rationalization, um, but yeah. So what I what I will talk about today is primarily about the P completion. Um, okay, so there's a construction which uh, which goes back to um, goes back to originally to Quillen and brought up by uh, Welthausen and maybe in this form, or in this case due to Thomason and Trebeau. Uh And what it's going to do is that to a to a scheme X. So I, again, I'm going to assume this QCQS assumption everywhere. Uh, it's it, it associates a, a spectrum, a K theory spectrum K of X. So one constructs constructs a spectrum K of X uh, such that pi zero of K of X uh, is K naught of X, uh, and K of X is extracted. Well, K of X doesn't really depend on X. It's it's something which is extracted in some uh, in some fashion. Sorry, uh, extraction in some fashion uh, from uh, from uh, from the the category of perfect complexes on X. Actually, we should consider that as a as a as a as a stable infinity category rather than a triangulated category here. Um, okay, so so this is the construction of higher K theory. And maybe before I go on, I should say something about um, so, so this, this construction takes takes place in, or it, it produces 
um, it produces a spectrum. Maybe since since that's going to be sort of important to um, the rest of my talk, maybe I should say say, say something about about spectra. Um, so spectra are um, well, I guess they're they're objects that that originated in algebraic topology. Um, spectra is sort of the natural home for some of these constructions, like algebraic K theory. But instead of maybe trying to say what a spectrum is, um, let me just say that spectra are they, they behave roughly kind of like chain complexes. So spectra are roughly uh, chain complexes, or maybe more precisely, what I should say is that spectra. So there's there's sort of a, a category of spectra, and uh, well, spectra are, are arranged into a, a triangulated category. Uh, arranged into a triangulated category, which, uh, which you can think of as sort of analogous to the derived category of the integers. Um, and so in fact, if you want to rationalize spectra when you rationalize the category of spectra, you get the same as the derived category of the rational numbers. Um, and you can think of, and so the difference between spectra and, and D of Z is somehow one of one of torsion phenomena. Um, and right, so, so, so just uh, um, notationally, so, so just as, uh, so given a chain complex or given an object of the derived category um, that has, uh, that has uh, homology groups. So, so just as an object of D of C has uh, homology groups. Uh, a spectrum has uh, homotopy groups. Well, I mean, you can think of them as maps maps in the category of spectra from the unit object into your your object. I mean, that's how you could think of homology groups in in D of Z. Um, and um, right, so so maybe instead of Maybe I should just sort of say that essentially you, you sort of manipulate spectra, at least at sort of um, sort of at the first first day, you know, you sort of manipulate spectra in, in much of the same ways that you you manipulate derived uh, to manipulate chain complexes and uh, but really objects of the derived category. Um, on the other hand, there are some features of spectra uh, that that don't show up when you think about chain complexes. There are some ways in which spectra behave sort of fundamentally very differently from chain complexes. Um, which yep, which sort of lead to uh, a lot of additional phenomena, and some of those will actually maybe come up a little bit later in the talk. But yeah, so maybe to at least a first approximation, they're sort of manipulated the same way as, as chain complexes, and many constructions sort of in homotopy theory or in K theory are, are naturally going to produce spectra rather than chain complexes. So, so um, Gil, there, there, yeah. I feel like I want to. There's a bunch of discussion slash questions in on Discord. And I don't feel like I want to ask, I have the question to ask, but if someone can ask, there are a bunch of related questions. If someone can, I feel like it's worth asking if you know someone's willing to do it. Or maybe no one's willing to do it. No? I, I, yeah, think, I, know. I think the question that Ravi's alluding to is right now you're writing K of X as a single spectrum, but yes. a lot of people are expecting this to vary in X and be some kind of sheaf of spectra over the Zariski side or something. And I think you're going to talk about this, but people are just anticipating what you might want to say in advance. Right. So I mean, sorry. So given an X, one gets a spectrum K of X, and it's going to be functorial in X. So it's going to be functorial in X. So so in fact, so so right. So K of X, as I've sort of been, maybe I should say more explicitly. Um, so K so K theory is really somehow a machine that takes as an input a category like the or maybe specifically stable infinity category like perfect complex on X and produces a spectrum. So if you have an operation that will that will that you can do on perfect complexes, then you get a then you get an operation on or you get a map on K theory spectra. Um, so so for example, if you have a map of schemes, so given a map for, of schemes from Y to X, then you have a pullback. Well, you can pull back a perfect complex. So it goes from perf of X to perf of Y. And that gives you a map on K theory. So that leads to a map of K theory spectra from K of X to K of Y. But actually, you get a little bit more than that because uh, so if you're given, say, a proper LCI map, uh, so it, if I have if the map F uh, from Y to X is, is is actually proper in LCI, 
then I can take a, a push forward, RF lower star, from perf of y to perf of x. Um, and so, so um, well, sorry, you can always push forward on the derived category, but then the question is, does it preserve perfect complexes? And well, under this uh, assumption. Um, and so in this case, you, you, you get a push forward map on, on K theory spectra. So, so, so one, one, one thing that's sort of nice about K theory, so, so K theory is supposed to be maybe sort of at some level, it's something like a cohomology theory. Maybe that's sort of how it was envisioned, I think, originally. It's something like a cohomology theory that you can, you can associate to a scheme, but there are sort of many nice features of it. One nice feature, which I've already mentioned, is that you, you don't actually need that much sort of technical hypothesis to hypotheses to define it. Um, and the other is that it's, uh, it's sort of very, sort of get all these uh, like Geisen, Geisen maps or, or wrong way maps essentially for free because you can push forward perfect complexes um, under these assumptions. And so that gives you sort of wrong way maps. Whereas in general, if you have some sort of cohomology theory, it's, it's, usually, it's gonna be some extra work to produce these wrong way maps. Um, so sorry, I don't know if that answered the question, but hopefully. Um, Okay, so um, right. maybe let me continue. Okay, so so now uh, so the next thing I want to do is just state sort of an analog of, of this result over here. Um, sorry, so this result star that k zero when you rationalize is the same as as a Chow ring in this context. Um, and so there's a, there's sort of an analog of this that that shows up when you when you think about higher um, higher k theory. Um, and so, so that relies on the, the following construction, which is due to block construction, which is the construction of higher Chow groups. So, so, so this is a construction. So as I said, K theory is some sort of very general construction, but now, now I'm gonna go back to the setting of a smooth quasi-projective variety. So let X over K be smooth and quasi-projective. <laughs> So, um, so then Bloch defines these complexes of, uh, of higher Chow groups, or these complexes that compute the, the higher Chow groups. So, um, so one considers, so for each i greater than or equal to zero, one constructs or one defines a chain complex. Uh, so let me denote it z, z upper i of x, uh, such that in degree n, it's going to be co-dimension i cycles, co-dimension i algebraic cycles on x cross delta n, which intersect the faces properly. Oh, sorry, not delta n. Sorry. Uh, uh, x cross a n, um, which, uh, and we're going to look at all those co-dimension i cycles, which are going to intersect the faces properly. So maybe since I'm a little bit behind, uh, this is running a little bit behind uh, schedule, let me, let me just say that it's, uh, you define a chain complex. Essentially, you define a chain complex by considering algebraic cycles, co-dimension I cycles, on uh, not only on x, but on x cross uh, uh, affine spaces. And then you, well, right, so that defines a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, of groups, but then you, you make it into a chain complex by defining a boundary map that's somehow analogous to how you define the boundary map in singular homology. Um, so in fact, what you do is you sort of think of this an as, as something like a simplex, an algebraic version of a simplex, um, as a sort of simplicial homology, and then uh, you sort of restrict a cycle to you consider the the, the restriction of, of of a cycle to uh, to its faces, its simplicial faces, and you do that to 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 define a chain complex of, of abelian groups. Um, so so this defines for each i a chain complex. Zi of x, pull it, such that its homology in degree zero of Zi of x is exactly uh, the co-dimension i Chow group of x. So you get this complex such as the zeroth homology as the, um, well, you get a different complex for each i, uh, and its zeroth homology is the, uh, is the i, is the i Chow group. And in general, the homology groups of this complex are called the, the higher Chow groups. Um, and I think maybe one of the original uh, sort of pieces of motivation for uh, for um, for this construction uh, is is that if uh, 
Uh, so if V sitting inside X is a smooth closed subvariety, right? So somehow one issue with the theory of, of, of Chow groups is that when you, in the theory of Chow groups, you have these uh, sort of right exact sequences that you get whenever you have a, an inclusion of a closed subvariety in a, in a variety. And instead of a right exact sequence, it would be nice to have a long exact sequence. Um, and uh, so, so the theory of higher child groups gives a way of, of, of uh, producing such long exact sequences. Um, and that comes from the following fact, which is that if you have a smooth closed subvariety of X of say co-dimension C, uh, then uh, there exists an, well, it's, I guess it's an exact triangle. It's not quite an exact, well, it's an exact triangle uh, in the derived category uh, where you have, uh, I guess, ZI of V bullet mapping to ZI of, uh, sorry, ZI plus C of X bullet mapping to ZI of X minus V. Z, sorry. Let me write this clearly. Okay. Um, and so if you look at what happens on, uh, if you look at what happens on H0, you, 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 you obtain from this precisely the sort of the right exact sequence in Chow groups. Um, so let me just write that. So Chow upper I of, of V, Chow upper I plus C of X, Chow upper I plus C of X minus V to zero. And you extend that to a long exact sequence. So, so this is the, somehow the, one of the motivations of the theory of higher Chow groups. Okay, so, um, Right. So I guess what happens is that the, the higher child groups are somehow going to play the, the, the role in higher K theory that the, the ordinary child groups play in K0. Um, so just as the, sorry, sorry, I think it's conventional to re index. So, so the convention is that then you denote the motivic cohomology of, of X in weight I, uh, which is denoted by, well, I'm going to denote it as math, math EB Z of I motivic cohomology of X. And that's going to be this complex of co-dimension I cycles on X bullet. Uh, but now it's just sort of shifted by minus two I uh, for various reasons, I guess there's, there's this shift. And then there's the following theorem. So this is a theorem of uh, Friedlander, Suslin, Levine, and Vybotsky. And what it states is that, so again, I'm assuming X is smooth and quasi-projective, states that there is a filtration on K of X, on this algebraic K theory spectrum, K of X, such that GUR I of this filtration K of X is exactly this complex ZI of X, or equivalently the motivic cohomology of X shifted by two I. So, uh, so instead of, uh, and so moreover, this, fil this filtration turns out to split rationally. So it canonically splits. Um, and so if you, well, if you think about what happens to a, to a filtration, right? So if you have a filtered complex, you get a spectral sequence from the cohomology of the associated graded to the homology of the associate grade to the homology of the whole complex. And the analog is true when you have a filtered, so this is, I guess, a filtered spectrum. Um, and so, so, so you, you obtain a spectral sequence from, uh, from the higher child groups or from the motivic homology that, that converges to the higher K groups. Um, so, right, so you obtain a spectral sequence from, from motivic homology X to the higher K theory, to the higher K groups. And so in general, right, so maybe I didn't sort of emphasize this, but higher, higher K groups are, are essentially intractable to compute in practice. Um, I mean, K theory is, I guess the definition now is somehow well understood, but it's very, uh, sort of very difficult to actually, um, definition doesn't actually help you compute it. Um, and so this gives you, well, this, this gives sort of a really powerful tool for, um, for sort of well, sort of breaking, uh, breaking up K-theory into, into these pieces given by, given by the higher child groups. Well, I guess the problem is that the higher child groups are also very difficult to complicate, uh, to compute, even for a point. So even for a point, the higher child groups of a point are going to be super complicated. Um, 
But it, it turns out that, uh, so, so one way in which this, this gives a lot of information is that if you combine this with the, uh, with the, the balance and the balance and Lichtenbaum conjecture, so this is a, a theorem of Voivodsky and Roast. So theorem of Voivodsky and Roast. Sorry, Kiel, can I just ask about the yeah. type casting in this for other the previous theorem? Like uh, yes. GRI is a spectrum, right? And uh, yeah, upper it's a spectrum, but this is saying, in fact, it, it's more than a spectrum. It's actually a chain complex. So every chain complex gives you a spectrum. Okay. Um, Thanks. Right, so every, every, every chain complex gives you a spectrum such that you know, the homotopy groups the spectrum and the homology groups the complex correspond. Most spectra don't arise that way. But yeah, so upper it's a, it's a little bit surprising that you know, so it's, a, it's a filtration where the associated graded terms um, are really sort of in the derived category of the integers rather than in, in spectra. Thanks for pointing that out. That's a, that's a useful point. Okay, so the theorem of Vyvodsky and Roast is that, uh, so, all right, so you can describe, uh, so the Z mod, so if you work with torsion coefficients, you can describe the Z, Z mod L, the, the motivic cohomology of X with mod L coefficients as, well, as essentially some sort of truncations of, of the et al cohomology of X. Since I'm a little bit low on time, let me just say it right. So truncations of the et al cohomology, the mod L et al cohomology of X. So, right, so maybe in, let me just sort of say an example of this rather than um, upstating the, the result. So, so if, if X over C is a smooth, uh, smooth variety, then what this is going to imply is that if I take the if I take the algebraic K theory of X with sort of uh, again so with with L adic coefficients, then this is always going to map to the the topological K theory of X. Uh, well, the topological K theory not sorry, not just of X but of, of the space of complex points with L adic coefficients. And in this case, the, the theorem of of Vygotsky and Rose, the the balance Lichtenbaum conjecture, implies that this is an ISO sort of asymptotically in large enough degrees. And um, so this is sort of remarkable because if you, if you think about K0, you know, K0 of a, of a variety over C, so even with mod L coefficients, it can be something gigantic. Um, but if you somehow, if you look at topological K theory, well, that's not so far from topological cohomology, as in particular, these are like finitely generated abelian groups. And what this is saying is that somehow K0 with mod L coefficients can be really can be really messy, but when you go into high enough degrees, it, it becomes sort of purely topological. It doesn't really depend on the, the structure as an algebraic variety. Um, I hear, sorry, can I, sorry to have interrupted you. Do I clearly remember that L must be invertible in X? Yes, sorry. So I should say for, right, so for the theorem of Wojewodski and Roast, I should say that, yeah, thank you, uh, L is, not equal to the characteristic. So in fact, there is an analog of this when L is a characteristic. Uh, so I should say that when L is equal to the characteristic, there is an analog. Uh, so, right, so it's not quite gonna be the et al cohomology, but it's gonna be something else, or it's not gonna be like, well, it's not gonna be mod P et al cohomology, but there is an analog, uh, I guess these logarithmic drum that sheaves. Uh, so there's an analog due to, um, let me just say that there's an analog that one can, can compute with this due to, I guess in this case, due to Geiser and Levine. Um, and um, yeah. yeah, but thanks, that's a, that's a good point. Okay, so um, right, so maybe somehow the sort of motivating question for, um, for or a motivating question that I, I, I don't know if this question has sort of actually appeared in the literature. Uh, well, let me, let me just write the question. The question is, um, is there an analog? Is there an analog of this picture? So in other words, the motivic, the motivic filtration and of motivic homology uh, for more general schemes. So for example, if you have a singular scheme over a field or, or some scheme in mixed characteristic, is there an analog of motivic homology, is there an analog of this motivic filtration? Um, right, so yeah, I'm not sure this question has really uh, has, uh, appeared in the literature. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, so one reason I think it's kind of interesting is that, right, so there, 
certainly, um, wait, so somehow I mentioned the, the definition of K-theory is somehow so, so general, but these definitions, for example, the definition of higher Chow groups, it, it really is using, it's not, it's not going to work sort of completely generally. Uh, and in particular, the construction of this filtration is not going to work completely, completely generally. So maybe let me just point out a couple of issues. Um, so, um, right, so, um, so, 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 so one issue is that algebraic cycles so, so one issue is that algebraic cycles in general are, are going to be something that's nil invariant. They're not going to see no potent information. Right. Uh, but K theory does see nil, nil potent information. And so in fact, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a, there's a sort of a, a significant literature on like, computing lots of examples of K-theory of rings. Uh, well, in general, it's kind of hard, it, it's very difficult, as I mentioned, to compute K-theory, but there are many cases where you can, you can do it. And there's a significant literature of actually computing lots of examples of, of the K-theory of rings that have certain types of singularities, often lots of nil potents. And one could ask if there's an analog of like a sort of filtration and spectral sequence and so forth. So, so um, I, I have yeah. a question from chat. Yeah. Uh, an honest question asker asks, are you trying to establish a Miller conjecture in more generality? Uh, so it's not, it's not so, so much, uh, right. So I, I guess the, I mean, the Milner block Cato conjectures or maybe more precisely in this case, Ellens and Lichtenbaum conjectures are gonna be about the, are gonna be about describing the structure of this, about, uh, are about describing the structure of motivic homology if you, um, you know, if you have a smooth variety over a field. So they, they give this um, this description, which I I still find, I, well, at least I find really sort of mysterious and um, sort of interesting that, that motivic homology is this truncation of its Hall homology. Um, um, but uh, I guess what I'm asking about is, is just whether one can construct the analog of this motivic spectral sequence. Um, so this is nice. sort of the basic question that I think, I think right, so one doesn't know the answer. Um, and in fact, uh, I guess part of this is, is just sort of maybe, you know, I, I would like to understand the, you know, the sort of motivic filtration better to, to begin with, and if one can do it more generally. And let me just sort of mention one other sort of, fundament, sort of fundamental instruction in sort of what has been done so far, which is that current approaches, um, sort of all, all the current approaches to defining this type of motivic filtration um, use A1 invariance crucially. So use A1 invariance. So in other words, uh, they use the fact that the K-theory of X or say the Chow ring of X is the same as the K-theory of X cross A1, the Chow ring of X cross A1 via pullback. And this is true if X is regular, but it's very much not, not true. It's very much not true otherwise. Um, and then even, even if you are in the regular case, I think already one doesn't have, one doesn't quite have the construction in this generality of say you're smooth over the integers rather than a field. I mean, maybe the, the theory will, or existing methods can advance to, to do that. But I, I, I think to get to singular schemes somehow really need something um, different. Um, okay. So I guess what I wanna talk about in the remaining time maybe very briefly is to um, so, so, so the idea is that um, that one can do this. So one, so right. So I, um, so I, at least my sense is that probably this is somewhat. This, this could be quite sort of a difficult question, but at least one can do this uh, for a tau k theory rather than k theory. Uh, and furthermore, this, uh, this well, it turns out that this connects to sort of interesting and um, uh, and recent sort of advances in, in arithmetic as well in the uh, in the sort of piadic uh, piadic context. Um, okay, so so maybe let me just make a definition first. So so, so definition. So it's all K theory, right? So sorry. So this um, so it's all K theory is the Etal sheafification 
of K-theory, right? So I think this came up in one of the earlier questions. The idea is that it's, we consider the K-theory not just in a single scheme, but the K-theory as a functor on all schemes. And well, you can, you can ask sort of what, what general properties does such a functor satisfy? And well, one of sort of the main, um, sort of a really fundamental phenomenon in, in K theory is that it, it is that it doesn't it, it doesn't satisfy a tall descent. It satisfies something weaker. It satisfies Snevis descent, uh, but it doesn't satisfy tall descent. Um, so it, I guess um, so. I guess one can formulate the notion. So, so you think of you can think of K theory as a it's it's like a it's a pre sheaf of, of with values and spectra on, on on the category of schemes, and there's a notion for for that to be in a tall sheaf. Well, just as there's a notion of a, of a pre sheaf of abelian groups to be a a sheaf, there's this notion for spectra, and uh, so, so so K theory is not in a tall sheaf, but you can you can form sort of the minimal approximation, the universal approximation that is in a tall sheaf, and that's called a tall K theory. So, so how much is this? Seems like a strange, potentially strange notion. Like how much is lost in how much is like how much is lost and gained by right? Uh, that's a big question. I know. Right. So. Um, how much is lost and gained? Well, there's, I guess there's the following, well, sort of the, I think one of sort of the central themes in, in K-theory for a while was, was the Quill and Lichtenbaum conjecture, which was sort of a, we say the less precise version of the, the Billings and Lichtenbaum conjecture, which is that you, what happens is that you lose stuff that happens in low degrees. So in general, what you should imagine is, so let me just state this theorem. And I guess this is largely due to, so you have Wolodsky, Roast, and Geiser, and Levine. And let me, let me, yeah. So if X is a scheme, excuse me, QCQS scheme with reasonable finiteness assumptions. So essentially that's gonna mean, for example, we're gonna, gonna want to assume finite chromological dimension, finite curl dimension, finite atelic chromological dimension, we're going to need to assume a little bit more of the characteristic P. Um, so I'm going to low on time, maybe let me keep going. Uh, so then, uh, right, so then the statement is that the map from the K theory to the atal K theory of X is an ISO uh, in large degrees, uh, in large enough degrees. Um, and so this was, I think, originally the sort of the idea of the Quill and Lichtenbaum conjecture that 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 the difference between K theory and atal K theory should uh, should sort of only happen in in high enough degrees. Um, and since I'm sort of glossing over this, maybe let me just say that a sort of a maybe a reference where this is sort of worked out in a in a lot of detail is uh, uh, my joint paper with uh, Dustin Clausen um, uh, titled "Hyper Descent in Atal K Theory," where where we work out some of these dimension bounds and so forth. Okay. Okay, so, so that's that's something about a tall K theory. And maybe let me make some sort of remarks about, um, about what this construction is doing. So the idea is that it's, uh, when you compare it to K theory, it, it is that it's it's making sort of the low degree information get simpler. Um, so another another thing I should say is that, right, so that this is, again, the, di the sort of difference is, is really one of torsion. So the map from K theory to a tall K theory is a rational isomorphism. Um, so in fact, what I'm really going to focus on, um, I guess, for the rest of the talk is, is, is p-adic at all k theory. OK, so, le so let me try to say something about um, about about piatic um, piatic at all case here, and I only have ten minutes left. So, okay. So let let me um, right. So let let me say some. Let me let me try to say something about about what piatic at all case theory looks like. And let me say something about about where these filtrations come from. Okay. So I think um, so. There there are essentially two. It sort of splits into two cases. Um, so um, when we when we think about Piatic et al. K theory, the, the two cases are essentially the case one is when you work with schemes on which P is invertible, and case two is when you work with P complete things. So case one is schemes over Z adjoin one over P, 
Uh, and this is something that was first, uh, I think, first really uh, considered by Thomason. And what Thomason, and Thomason proved this sort of remarkable fact that, so, right, so, so maybe, maybe when you refer, when I first define a tall K theory, a priori, it, well, it uses the word at all. So a priori, you're, you're using sort of the at all site and you're, a priori, it's not something, you know, a priori, maybe it's not so clear that it has all that much to do with, with K theory. A priori, well, well maybe it is, it's more clear uh, looking at this uh, quote and Lichtenbaum stuff, but uh, at least a priori, um, you know, it's, it's something that really uses the Atal site of X. But, but Thomason showed that you can actually recover Atal K theory uh, by, by just working with the K theory of X and applying a certain procedure to it in the, uh, in the category of spectra. So, so Thomason showed that uh, the Atal K theory of X, so let's call it the piatic Atal K theory of X, piatic coefficients, uh, agrees in non-negative degrees, so not, not just in asymptotic asymptotically high degrees, but in non-negative degrees and essentially with no assumptions. Um, with a construction called the K1 localization of, of K of X. So, so essentially what Thomason shows is that there's a way of producing, uh, producing the Atal K theory of X from um, from uh, this sort of stable homotopy theoretic construction. So this, this uses this construction, uh, which is called K1 localization. It's a construction in the world of spectra. So as I, as I mentioned earlier, there, there are various constructions in the world of spectra that somehow have no analog in chain complexes. And, and sort of K1 localization is sort of a fundamental example of that. And um, well, I, I guess I don't have a lot of time to say, say much about K1 localization other than it is an it is an operation. It is a, it is a functor from spectra to spectra. It's an operation that you can do to a spectrum. It's uh, it's something like it's it's in particular going to piadically complete things, but it's also going to invert certain operators called uh, or in this context that are called bot elements. And these are certain sort of periodicity operators that exist well that are sort of all over the place in the world of spectra that, that sort of don't have an analog in the derived category. And it sort of somehow inverts those operators. Um, and the theorem of Thomason is that. Um, that at all K theory is well maybe up to some well up to at least in non-negative degrees it's the same as this construction, and moreover. Uh, so. So Thomason. Right. So Thomason's theorem is that there, is a filtration on this object, on either of these objects. or LK1 of K of X, such that the associated graded GER I is given by the atal homology of X with ZP of I coefficients and then shifted by two I. So, so Thomason's theorem is that you can, um, you, can filter, um, you can filter K1 local K theory or atal K theory in terms of atal homology. So this is supposed to be an analog, but a much easier analog of the motivic filtration and the reason that, well, this is this is something that you have very generally. That well, you you assume that you're over Z join one over P, but you don't really need any, uh, like you don't need to be smooth. You don't need any smoothness assumptions. Um, and in fact, this filtration is something that you get essentially formally. It's it's a, it's a Posnicka filtration in the world of Atal sheaves. So this filtration is the Posnicka filtration in the world of Atal sheaves. So in particular, it's some sort of very general construction that you get that, again, you essentially sort of have for free. Um, whereas on the other hand, the motivic filtration is something that you have to do sort of a lot of real work to construct it. Okay, so that's that's case one. Um, I guess case two is, is, uh, uh, is a case of piatic objects. And maybe this is the one where there's been sort of the most um, the current, um, current work and current interest. Um, so if, so now suppose R is a piatically complete ring. Yeah, R is a piatically complete ring. Uh, 
so in this case, um, right, maybe let me state the theorem. So this is the theorem of Bott, Morrow, and Schulze. So maybe let me first say, so I don't, uh, right, so maybe let me first say that it turns out that this P like a tall K theory with ZP coefficients turns out to be the same as another invariant called topological cyclic homology with ZP coefficients, which is defined using very different methods. Um, but maybe since I don't have time, let me just say that sort of the theorem is that there's an analog of the motivic filtration in this context. So there is a motivic filtration on the Piatic et al. K theory of R with ZP coefficients such that the ith associated graded piece is, well, it's an object that they define that they call ZP of I. I can write ZP of I BMS to be clear of R shifted by two I. Um, right, and so here the ZP of I, um, well, they're an object that you can define sort of in various ways, but you can, you can also in particular, right? So I guess you can define the filtration, they construct the filtration, you can define it to be the associated graded, but you can also define these ZP of I BMS sort of purely algebraically as uh, sort of filtered um, sort of Frobenius uh, eigenspaces on uh, prismatic homology. And right, so in fact, um, well, in fact, I think maybe originally the, the original construction of prismatic homology, so I mean, the, uh, in the case of uh, uh, schemes over OC. Um, so, so, so one reason, so one sort of current reason, uh, reason of sort of significant, you know, great current interest in these types of motivic filtrations is that the, the original construction of, uh, of prismatic homology in the, um, in the case of schemes over OC was, was actually done by, um, was, was actually done by using, well, not quite this, this object at all K theory or, or TC, but using some variant of this object, uh, some variant that's used to, to build TC. Uh, and what well, you can define the filtration, they, they, they define, a, they, they construct the filtration using sort of similar, very general techniques, essentially a Postnikov filtration. Uh, and then they, they sort of just take the associated gradients and, and, and then they get these, you know, these new objects uh, in arithmetic geometry. Um, okay, but so they, they, construct an, they construct sort of an analog of, of um, in particular, they construct sort of an analog of the motivic filtration in this context. Um, and again, maybe, right, so maybe what I should say is that, um, so this is a, um, so this is a, this is a construction which, um, this is a construction, right, so somehow works very, uh, sort of very generally, it works for any piatic ring. Uh, there's sort of no assumption on the singularities. Um, so, um, Right. So maybe what I should say is that certainly the sort of associated gradients are um, sort of objects are, are sort of quite interesting objects that um, I think are understood in some cases, but maybe not so well in others uh, at this point. But um, right. So so I, I I think maybe sort of philosophically one one reason that these associated grid pieces are uh, and this filtration is are sort of more tractable than what happens in the um, in the case of K theory. Is that roughly speaking, everything everything here is somehow built from differential forms. Um, so roughly one of the reasons that, the, that this that the bott morrow schulz construction is sort of works very generally is that uh, well the the definition of the motivic filtration sort of really relies on working with algebraic cycles. And algebraic cycles are well, in general very difficult, and in particular maybe they don't they don't quite work as well if you're over singular bases. Uh, but here everything is built. From differential forms, and there's a very good theory of differential forms that works um, with arbitrary singularities, namely the cotangent complex, and sort of that lets us um, that lets them define these objects. So I'm just about out of time, so maybe I should just sort of very briefly indicate sort of what we do, uh, or what we uh, do in this work in progress. So, um, so. I guess the first thing that we do is that we sort of glue these two constructions. We glue the construction of, 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 of Thomason and, and, and Bob Moro Schultze. So what we do is we construct a filtration 
sort of a quote unquote motivic filtration on the atal k theory, theatic atal k theory of a QCQS scheme. Uh, such that, uh, right, such that, well, first of all, it agrees with the previous constructions. So we construct an analog of the motivic filtration. In particular, we construct some sort of analog of et al motivic cohomology, not necessarily not motivic cohomology, but et al motivic cohomology that works for any QCQS scheme. Uh, so it agrees with the previous construction of Thomas and Prevost and uh, BMS2. Uh, and so that's somehow one has to check some compatibility. Um, and then the other thing, well, maybe is sort of the sort of more, uh, more difficult part is uh, that if X is smooth over Z, well, it's smooth over Z or maybe more generally a Dedekind, Dedekind uh, or a DVR with perfect residue field. Uh, well, maybe let me say, yeah, no, let me say Z. Uh, then GER I is given by et al. Schiefified uh, higher tau groups. Right. So, so somehow in in the um, so, there, the, so 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 in in these constructions of uh, so for example in the Bodmer Schulze construction, sort of all connections to to higher tau groups in algebraic cycles go away, and so somehow we're saying that in fact you can you can sort of connect them. Um, you, you can in fact connect them to um, um, to higher child groups. So yeah, so you can define, so anyway, the upshot is that you can um, you can define sort of a, um, a version of the, the motivic filtration on, on a tal k theory. Um, so with theatic coefficients, it should be possible to do it integrally um, if one checks some compatibilities. Um, and um, yeah, so I think that's all I have. So, so thank you for your attention. Great, thanks. We can all 